What's up you guys, I'm Dan, this is Frugal Not Cheap, and today we'll talk about SpaceX's latest experimental rocket test, which did not explode. Earlier this month, SpaceX launched IFT-4, or Integrated Flight Test 4, of its Starship and Super Heavy rocket, and uh, this time it did not explode. I put explode in quotes because a lot of the mainstream media uh, was putting out very, very negative comments about uh, the first three flight tests, talking about how they all um, blew up. And yes, these tests did end in what SpaceX calls a RUD, or a random unscheduled disassembly. But really what happened is that something went wrong with the test, and rather than allow the vehicle to be a danger to anything or anyone, then of course the uh, flight termination sequence was initiated, and um, you know, it kind of blew itself up. But before we get any further, why should we care about any of this? Well, really the whole point of this project is to drastically reduce the cost of putting payload up into orbit. Before SpaceX, all rockets were fully expendable. In other words, imagine if uh, every time that you ran to the grocery store, you had to, um, you know, your car was no longer usable and you had to buy a new car in order to get home. That's completely insane, right? But that's basically the way that we've been using rockets. SpaceX developed a way to recover the boosters, that's the bottom part of the rocket, so they developed a way to recover these boosters by having them boost back down to Earth, and then propulsively, in other words, they ignite their engines again in order to come to a soft landing, and they've got these landing legs that come out. It's pretty incredible, um, I'll never get tired of seeing them do it, even though it's become a pretty everyday occurrence now. Later on, they also figured out how to reuse the fairings, those are the two pieces uh, on the nose cone that protect the payload. But that's not complete reusability, as a lot of the first stage, that upper portion of the Falcon 9 rocket, is still uh, lost. It's not able to be um, recovered and reused after each flight. Not only that, but Falcon 9 is also much, much smaller than the, uh, the Starship and Super Heavy uh, vehicle that they're testing now. So here's a little diagram. Second from the left there, we can see Falcon Heavy, which is basically a Falcon 9 plus two more Falcon uh, 9 boosters attached to it. It's pretty crazy. But you can see it's much, much smaller than the current vehicle, which is by far the largest in this image. And is also way more powerful than some of the other vehicles on here, like the Saturn V rocket's pretty big, uh, but Starship with Super Heavy is um, way more powerful than it. I'll put the exact number here. To put some numbers to this, Starship, when stacked on top of the Super Heavy booster, is 120 meters, or just under 400 feet tall. That's about a 36-story skyscraper, and we're launching this thing into space. Not only that, but it can carry 150 tons of payload and be fully reusable. At least that's the goal. And that's really the magic, that we won't be expending this vehicle after each flight, that all of it will return back to Earth and we'll be able to then fly again. In other words, the only part that's expended on each flight is the fuel, just like a plane or just like a car. What about that fuel? Well, unlike Falcon 9 and Falcon 1 that ran on a kerosene-based fuel, a Keralox, this will be a methylox fuel, in other words, methane and oxygen. The new Rafter engines, which are a full flow stage combustion cycle uh, engine, um, is, is meant to work with uh, this methylox, but it's also uh, a choice that was made in order to have a fuel that could be created sustainably on Mars. Basically, we could use uh, renewable energy and the Sabatier process in order to make more of it. The end result, though, of um, having you know the ability to send way more payload to orbit uh, with one vehicle, having it be completely reusable, is just a ridiculous re reduction in cost. It's estimated that a launch could cost as low as $10 million, which would cut the cost of lifting one kilogram to orbit to about $100. This is uh, insanely small compared to the about $147,000 per kilogram that's estimated for our technology back in the 80s, and still much, much smaller than the current about $2,300 using current SpaceX technology on Falcon 9. Hopefully what this will mean is that because we're able to um, cost-effectively send a whole lot of payload into orbit and beyond, then we'll be able to establish a permanent presence on the Moon, Mars, and beyond. 
In other words, this whole thing is really about making science fiction become science reality. So this all started way, way long ago with this um, little hopper thing that was just meant to test out the Raptor engines and, um, you know, moving, you know, gimbling them and all that stuff. Then they moved on to testing the upper stage, which is the Starship vehicle, and they did a bunch of hops with that. The final test with that involved uh, doing this really cool kind of flip maneuver that's used in order to land it. So basically as it re-enters, it sort of belly flops in. This way we're using the atmosphere to break the vehicle and slow it down a whole lot instead of using a bunch of fuel, which we don't have. And then once it gets uh, down, you know, uh, a lot closer to uh, a lot closer to the ground, then it performs a flip maneuver like this, and then um, you know does a landing burn in order to land vertically um, at the end. So pretty crazy thing, and um, and they were able to test that. And so then they moved on to these integrated flight tests of both the Starship um, first stage and also the super heavy booster or second stage. The first test occurred on April 20 of last year, 2023, so 420. Uh, it took off just fine, which absolutely was not a given, by the way. Um, you know, easily could have blown up, but uh, they totally cleared the launch pad. And it was able to pass max Q, which is sort of the, um, the, the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure because um, the atmosphere starts to thin out at, at a certain point, even though we're accelerating faster and faster. But unfortunately, they didn't have a whole lot of control over the vehicle. And so they, they, they chose to forego trying a stage separation that could have been pretty dangerous. And the flight termination system that led to the RUD, the rapid unscheduled uh, disassembly, uh, was initiated. On top of that, the launch pad was also severely damaged and that would be need to, and that needed to be repaired for the next flight. I've got my laptop here, so let's take a look at some of that together. Attention all operators on countdown one. We're going to start our go no go poll for today's flight. Raptor one, go. So it's just a massive, massive and uh, beautiful vehicle. I still can't believe that uh, <laughs> they're able to fly this thing. And um, man, just look at that. And it's all made of stainless steel. So let's skip a little bit forward here to kind of the most uh, exciting part. And here she is taking off. Again, this is not a given. Thirty-six stories. Absolutely incredible. But again, unfortunately, they didn't have a whole lot of control, and so. Uh, They didn't try to separate the stages. That's another engine. See if we can see this exciting end to the uh, test. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> there you have it, it's pretty amazing. The second test, IFT2, was held on November 18th of 2023. So there's quite a gap there, as you can see there, as they um, worked on building up the uh, the landing, uh, the launch pad, uh, developing this you know huge daily water deluge system in order to protect it from all those flames and then all that pressure as well. And they also introduced new technology, which is pretty gutsy, uh, which is basically what's called hot stage separation. In other words, the, um, the first stage, the Starship, uh, actually ignites its engines while the two parts are still connected together in order to separate from it. And we saw incremental progress here with the second test. Um, we did clear the launch pad, we hit max Q, the main engines were cut off, and then we saw a successful hot staging. Unfortunately, during the boost back burn for the booster, <laughs> um, some there was a, a clog in the liquid oxygen um, filter and even though they were able to relight nine out of ten of the engines then um, over time because of this blockage then more and more of the engines failed and so we had to red the booster as well then as for starship they had um, purposefully like a put a little bit too much liquid oxygen fuel and they had to vent some and in this venting process which could have been avoided but you know they didn't know unfortunately it lit some onboard fires and then this triggered the flight termination system as well um, so why don't we take a quick look at that uh, hot stage separation and these ruts and then we'll move on to IFT3 attention all operators on countdown one this is the final go no go for flight two of starship 
So it's a beautiful lift off. Everything going so far so smooth at the beginning. And then the really cool part. Here we go, main engine cut off for the boosters. And there, the hot stage separation. You know, just implementing a completely new <laughs> new process here <laughs> on, their, on their second launch attempt. Wow. <laughs> and there it was, yeah. Because they lost the engines, they had to run the, <laughs> run the booster. And then unfortunately we also had to, uh, to lose Starship as well. Um, so <laughs> and there it was, because of that onboard fire. But you can see everyone's happy because again, you know, they're making continued pro progress as they as they work out these kinks and um, they're getting a whole lot of great useful data um, to help the development process moving forward. You know, there's only so much that you can model and there's a whole lot you can learn from actually trying things out. So we get to our third flight test, which was conducted this year in 2024 in March. So about a year after the initial uh, IFT-1 and we saw even further progress. After the hot stage separation, uh, we did do a boost back burn. But again, unfortunately, there were still some uh, cloggage issues with the um, liquid oxygen fuel. And uh, yeah, that boost back burn um, ended prematurely, so it wasn't able to complete um, all of its job. But still, the booster did come back down and they were able to attempt a landing burn. So this is further than they'd gone before, but because of this blockage, again, only two out of the seven engines that had been given a command to relight uh, were able to do so. So not 100% success there, but we're continuing to see further progress over last time, incremental progress. And we saw the same for Starship, where they were actually able to uh, demo some additional new tech, uh, which was uh, basically um, demoing a process that would be used for transferring propellant between vehicles, something that we're going to need to do in order to get Starships over to Mars. And also something that will need to be done in order to get um, astronauts and other cargo over to the moon as well. They were also going to test uh, opening and closing the payload doors, but those were a failure. Unfortunately, a stuck roll control valve meant that they lost uh, control of roll. <laughs> and so while Starship was able to make re-entry from space, it was, uh, you know, blown up over the Atlantic in order to, you know, prevent any issues because, again, they couldn't control uh, the vehicle. Let's take a quick look at some highlights. This is the final go-no-go no go pull for Flight 3 of Starship. It's your downrange. So again, beautiful takeoff. Got that nice uh, hot stage separation. Stage separation. We were able to do a little bit of a boost back burn, but again, not complete. And uh, there was that attempt at a landing burn, but not sufficient to slow the vehicle down very much. And then here is for Starship. You can see it's just uh, the <laughs> rolling, rolling, rolling uh, the way it's not supposed to be. <laughs> but they were able to, to do that uh, propellant transfer uh, demo. Very important milestone for their uh, contract with NASA for the moon. Here is that successful re-entry. Again, we got further along, uh, this time with both uh, vehicles, both parts of the vehicle than we did before. That's all hot plasma. Crazy, crazy looking. Amazing we can get footage of that. But there was no control, and so of course they readied it, and uh, we're on to flight four. So for SpaceX, uh, fourth time seems to be the charm. They also had three unsuccessful attempts of um, launching their Falcon 1 rocket to orbit, but they just barely succeeded with leftover parts in order to uh, launch their fourth attempt into orbit. And uh, we have a similar thing here, where the fourth attempt of the integrated flight test of uh, Starship and Super Heavy worked out quite well. This time, I think we'll just watch the video and I'll give you my commentary as we go along because it was just so exciting and amazing. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. There we can see in the bottom left that all of the engines were able to light initially. Absolutely beautiful. But we lost one engine out of, um, I think, 35 or so, or 36. Vehicle is pitching down range. Of 
But uh, yeah, loss of one engine, definitely not enough to, uh, <laughs> to cause a major issue for this flight. So, we get up out into space. Starship and we get these uh, beautiful views the now here of both uh, the booster from different angles. Okay, so we're about to get main engine cut off here. Let's keep going further. Okay, there's the booster engine cutoff. And now the hot staging. Stage separation confirmed. And yet again, they use new technology. They um, added this hot staging ring uh, that is expendable. So that's something that they're going to get rid of for the next, uh, you know, future iterations. I don't know if it's the next flight or the one after that. Its own power booster boosting back. Looks like all 13 are lit. Kate, we got a booster Ooh, nice. Back. So this is, again, a further progress. Remember space. last time they had a blockage in this filter um, and they couldn't do the boost back burn that successfully. And mm -hmm. now they've done that. So the booster's on its way back to Earth. Ship pressures are not and Starship's on its way as well. Lots of excitement. So right here... Here's the jettison of that hot staging ring that I was talking about. This is our view of the jettison. So a booster on its way back to Earth and Starship uh, continues. And we are expecting that landing burn here. So the booster made its way back down towards the Earth. It's down to 14 kilometers and should do its uh, boost burn, I mean its landing burn, in order to slow be, down and have a nice soft touchdown in the ocean. Igniting 13 engines and this is a great view on your left hand side is a view, is three views from the booster and your right hand side a view from the ship. And you can see those grid fins on your left hand screen rotating and turning. Okay, Here it is! There's the landing burn. Oh my god, all but one engine. Slowed the vehicle down. She was dead on target, exactly where they expected it to be. In fact, they were able to get camera views of it because it landed right where it was supposed to. Just a nice, gentle landing. You can hear the uh, just the incredible excitement from the team there. Amazing. So what this means is next time they're actually going to try to catch this thing with the launch tower. It has these arms, so it's called Mechazilla, and they're going to kind of chopstick in and try to actually catch that booster on those landing on those grid fins. Oh, so cool! So now we turn our attention over to the uh, the first stage, the, the upper stage. I mean, to Starship for the uh, the reentry. Looks like I need to go to a different video from that. Here's the re-entry of Starship with the beautiful plasma. It's crazy. And um, <laughs> this little flap here went through heck on its way down. Really, really got burnt up. It experienced a lot of heat and pressure here. And it's a little bit started to fly off. And eventually it really got in bad shape, as you can see here. Um, and then some of the, 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 the camera cracked and debris got on the camera lens as well. So it got hard to see exactly what was going on. Uh, as we can see here, really hard to see what's going on. But the really, really crazy thing, we get down to six kilometers in altitude here. Uh, angle. And again, we so are we are belly flopping down. What we want to do is vertical. try this flip and maneuver and then a landing position. burn. And I'm unbelievably, despite all the damage to the vehicle, incredibly, here's the flip and the landing burn. Absolutely amazing. Just no one. <laughs> I just wow. Just wow. Now it did land six kilometers away from its intended target, but six kilometers is not very much when we're talking about the distances that this vehicle traveled. It's just a phenomenal achievement and really looking forward to seeing what's going to happen in the upcoming test. We're hoping to see that within a month or two. So as you can guess, the big challenge now is if they can get the vehicle, the Starship vehicle, the upper stage, in order to survive uh, the re-entry in a way where it's fully reusable. So these heat tiles are going to be able to, to take um, you know, all of that and then, you know, maybe they can quickly replace a couple or, or something like that. But ideally, they, they'll develop some kind of cooling system or, or new technologies in the places where it really needs help. That's one of the things that they've been able to identify with this test. And uh, so, yeah, just a 
onwards towards rapid and full reusability, fingers crossed. Really excited for the future here for SpaceX. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.